from Animal Trades and this is April Wilkerson. I don't think you've probably heard of her, but <laughs> she's my best friend and she came up to Seattle, Washington to visit me and help me build one of my dream projects, which is building a tiny house for my mom. We have seven days. We'll, we'll show, show you how, how we, we do it. it. Hey, we in sync. Like Ann said, I went to Seattle for seven days with the motivation to tackle something off her to-do list. When she threw out the idea of a tiny house, I didn't think it was beyond our ability, even given the timeline. The location Ann wanted the house actually had a shed currently there, but it was in such poor condition that the first thing she did was grab the tractor and push it over. We didn't want to take the time to clear up the debris, so we just kind of just shoved it over to the side. And this shot is me standing on top of it to kind of give you an idea on how tight of quarters we'll actually be working in. The tiny house will be 8 by 12, and it's a prime area for a tiny house once it's built, as it's just a short walk from the lake. But we were a little cramped building it, and there's about a 300 foot walk to get to the site, which means we spent a good portion of the very first day doing nothing but humping material back to the job site one load at a time. Something else about this location is the ground is super soft and spongy due to the amount of rain that the area gets. With that, instead of doing a slab, we went with a pier and beam setup. However, instead of digging them down into the ground and setting them on concrete, we used adjustable brackets on top of the piers that will hold the beams. This way, Anne will be able to make adjustments in the future as the ground shifts or even give her the ability to pick up the entire tiny house and completely relocate it. After getting the pier set up, roughly where the footprint of the tiny house needed to be, we pulled a string line to get them all in a perfect line, then set both of the beams in their brackets. The timber you see here are actually treated wood. In my area, treated material is blonde with a green tint, so I thought this was interesting. All right, and beams are set, so let's start putting on a floor. We pulled a tape and spent a good amount of time not only getting the two beams square, but also getting them level. First getting each beam level, then making sure that they were also level to each other. There we we go, made adjustments buddy. by raising or lowering those brackets in the piers. Woo! <laughs> yes! Are you like ninja crying as you're high-fiving? Yep. You're unique and I love it. We started by butting together the two end boards and marking off where each one of the floor joists will need to go. And can I just say how cool it is to come out of my shop build where my friend George taught me so much about building and framing and be able to put that knowledge into use, but then to also be able to pass it along to yet another friend. I just like the circle of things. Before attaching the joists, each one needed to be cut to length. So Anne and I worked out a quick system where I would mark the boards, draw a line, then pass them to her to cut. Then to attach them, we would use the marks we made previously on those two outside boards to line the joist up. You can see that I use a speed square to make sure that the tops are flush to one another while Anne sticks it in place with a nail. This keeps things aligned and also your hands out of the way. We repeated this all the way down until all the joists were attached. And what I mentioned earlier about being cramped while building meant we didn't have much area to work outside of the footprint where the house was actually going to be going. So that's why we are building the floor directly on the pyramid beams. It was a little bit of a balancing act, but heck, we got it done. With that done, we made a few marks on the beams, then centered up the floor before taking the diagonal measurements and squaring it up. Once both read the same measurement, we attached the floor to the beams by toenailing in a few nails through each joist. And next up was decking. For a subfloor, we went with 3 quarter inch treated plywood, and this step is as simple as laying down the panels and attaching it to each joist. And it did tickle me that Anne was so impressed with our work up to this point when things lined up perfectly. Dude, dude, that is so cool. I can't believe it lined up. This is the best part about taking the time to make sure things are square so that things like this, it makes these, all these next steps go so much quicker and easier. And that's the truth. If you build a structure, I can't recommend enough to take your time to make sure things are square and level because it will make all the next steps go so much quicker and easier for you. I have a floor, kids! On the floor, we did stagger the seams of the plywood. Okay. Anne would nail the corners to tack them in place. Then we chalk line to mark the location of each joist so that we could quickly come through and do the intermediate nailing. I got to introduce Anne to bump mode on the nailer, and I might be mistaken, but I think she was a fan. 
If you aren't familiar, bump mode allows you to hold the trigger down and the gun will shoot a nail when the nozzle is compressed. Next we had to pause because we were building this tiny house on the fly and I really wanted to take a second to model up the walls we were about to start framing so that we would be able to have a clear cut plan of attack. And while I do that, let me take a moment to talk to you about this video sponsor, which is Wix.com. Wix is a free website building platform designed to take the fear and frustrations out of building a website. Like many of you guys, I'm a creator who works with her hands. I am not much of a web developer. Fortunately, Wix makes it quick for even the most inexperienced business owners, creators, and artists to develop their own sophisticated looking website using their built-in templates. I personally use the Wix platform to create a site for my custom grenade stools that I sell in both metal and wood. Wix not only streamlined the site building process with their drag and drop interface, but they also take care of a lot of the heavy lifting on the back end, such as reliable hosting to keep my website safe and secure, custom domain name, mailbox, and even email marketing. Not only does Wix have a lot of function built into it, such as listing products, collecting payments, and sending invoices, but they are all very intuitive to set up. So if you're interested in starting a free website, then go to wix.com slash go slash April Wilkerson, or click the link down in the description below. Big thank you to Wix for supporting my channel, but let's get back to framing. We will be using the floor we just built to build all of the walls on. We started building the back wall first because it's one of the two largest, and it also doesn't have any windows or doors to frame in. We started off with what will be the top and bottom plate butted up next to each other, and first marked off where all the studs needed to be placed. Every stud needed to be cut to length, so we set up a system once again to knock it out quickly. And I think it's worth noting that it takes a surprisingly small amount of tools in order to complete such an undertaking. We were restricted to only using battery operated tools because of the location, and about 90% of the entire building relied on a circular saw and a framing nailer. Here's a photo we took of all the tools we used after the project was complete. The only tool missing from the photo is a chalk line, and that's an important one, so don't, don't forget that one. With this wall not having any doors or windows to frame in, it really did come together very quickly. Next, we framed the two side walls, and we actually built it directly on top of the larger wall that we just finished. Here, you want to run the nailer? Don't nail the wall into the other wall. <laughs> I'll do my best. Then we did the exact same to the other short wall over on the other side. And if you're interested, I will have a full set of plans for this tiny house over on my website. Look for a link down in the description. After getting the third wall built, we had to pause and stand these up before building that fourth and final wall. Instead of doing what I did on my shop, where we framed, stood up the walls, and then skimmed them while being on ladders, Ann and I decided to try skinning the walls before ever standing them up. We'll be using T111 for siding, but since house wrap has to go down first, that is where we started. We quickly squared up the wall and then stretched the house wrap tightly across the studs and stapled it down. You'll notice that we are skipping sheathing the walls in OSB first. That's because we'll be using 5 8 inch siding, which is thick enough to give the wall its needed shear strength. This not only saves time, but it also saves a little bit off the cost. Once we got the house wrap attached, we came back with the tongue and groove T111 siding. And let me say that while it may seem the simpler option to skin the walls before standing them up, I don't think it is. It does remove a lot of the ladder work later, but it presents a whole new set of challenges and introduces a lot of points for potential mistakes. Doing it this way, you have to make sure that you compensate for the correct amount for the double top plate that will later be added in. The siding overhang at the bottom and the, and the siding side overhang where the mating of two walls will later be joined together. Doing it both ways now, I can honestly say I don't think this route is any quicker and I don't know if I would say that it's easier either. Even though the wall isn't too terribly heavy, it definitely required more than two sets of hands to get it stood up and braced. Thankfully, Anne has some awesome neighbors that were able to chip in. Let me get mine forward. Okay. Uh, Annie, why don't you get yours off the foundation? Okay. There we go. Okay, one, two, two three. Yep, okay. okay. Now that siding overhangs the base plate of the walls by about an inch. With that, once we stood the wall mostly up, we had to move it forward enough for this lip to fall off the edge of the floor. Then we could line up the wall squarely to the floor, then attach some bracing to hold it in place. 
and went directly from the outside stud of the wall to the foundation's side wall. You should be able to let it go now. Right. Woo! Thank, Thank you so you much for helping. So much. Even though we were losing daylight, we were bound and determined to stand up these other two walls. When trying to stand up that first short wall, we ran into a problem where the two braces were interfering with each other. So we switched the brace holding the wall square to the inside of the short wall and then continued nailing it in place. Then we also placed a brace in the center of the large wall going down to a cleat on the ground because we discovered we wouldn't have enough room to move the other short wall into place with this side brace located where it was. Again, the job site was a little bit cramped, but we made it work. The last thing we did that day with the little bit of daylight we had left was cut all of the studs and cripples for that last remaining wall. This way the next morning we could start right in on building out the wall. We once again used the floor as a work surface to build the walls and decided to build it in two parts to make standing it up on our own easier. And with breaking the wall into two, we framed and then house wrapped one section, moved it into place, then repeated with the second. Or actually, since this second section is mostly door opening, we didn't bother with house wrapping it before standing it up. Okay, ready? Hey, yep, 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 up. Okay, good job, good job. Hey, okay. Hey, hey, buddy. Papa, I just wait over here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and after plumbing that final wall, we came back and secured it to the two side walls then came back and cut out that bottom scab piece. Ooh. Next, we attached the second top plate. The reason you don't do this in the initial framing step is because you wanna use it as a way to tie the four walls together. And you can only do that once all four are standing. I can show you what I mean in the model I sketched up a little bit easier. See, this top plate ends at the wall, but the second top plate connects not only to this wall, but also to its neighboring wall. And with the majority of the walls done, we came back with the house wrap on this last section. With it having a door in it, I cut two diagonal lines from both top corners down to the center to create a V. Then wrapped the loose ends up or around the walls. Once things were tight, I stapled them in place and then cut off the remainder. Now all of the seams in the house wrap needed to be taped over. So next we went around all four sides and taped every horizontal and vertical seam. And that is where I'm gonna have to stop for this one. If it isn't obvious from the footage, Anna and I had a blast building this. It is just way too much fun building things with friends. If you would like to see more, then I definitely recommend checking out Anne's video on the project. I have left you a link down in the description. And of course, stay tuned for my next video where I will continue on with the build process. Until then, I hope that you enjoyed this one. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you're building something of your own. I will see you soon. Do you want a hammer? Oh, I have one. Because I'm a carpenter. Huh? Oh, meal to do? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Just stop what you're doing. No, I'm your pack mule. Because you're wearing yoga pants and not a pillow. <laughs> you know, I always like to be properly dressed for every job. Oh, yeah. As a woman, I need to have the perfect attire. <laughs> It's more about outfits than efficiency. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then we'll come back and do all the intermediate oh, yeah. and then I can introduce you to bump mode. Ow! That's not. You okay? <laughs> Did you hit your hand? Yeah. Annie. <laughs> you alright? Yeah. Hey. Hey. I love you. I love you. This is fun.